Hi, Don here. Welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. I'm going to go over today uh, what are some of the best podiatry-specific productivity systems uh, used uh, to get more done in less time. I know this sounds like a big feat, but these are some of the best techniques that have been used and have been talked about. So for you, if you have been in practice for a number of years and you want to learn how to be more productive, or if you're just starting out, these are going to be some great uh, tips for you. Before I start, though, I want to ask you not to think of if I know about these things, but I'd like you to rather ask how good am I at doing these things? Because it's different about, oh, yeah, I, I know that, or I've heard that before. Many times we're looking for new information when we just don't even use the information that we have. That That's what I would like to emphasize here. So it's not just saying, oh, yeah, yeah, Don, I've heard about that before, but I'd like you to look at, well, how good am I at doing this? So these are uh, actual things. So first, we're going to look at how to save time and be organized. All of us are very busy. We have families, we have practices to run, we want to be organized. And here are some of the best tips. First is to stop multitasking. We've always heard about this and there are detrimental effects to multitasking. We can't do two things at once. So for example, uh, finishing medical record notes and talking to a patient on the phone. It, it doesn't work to do it together. Um, trying to finish your notes and looking at your cell phone or having looking at another website, uh, kind of going through step uh, from one task to another task. Now, this is something that we, we tend to do quite a bit. We think we're being much more efficient, but it really works better to do another system, uh, a system that I'm going to talk about called time blocking, if you don't do that. Touch each task once only and then complete it. Uh, specifically, I want to refer this to a few things like let's talk about your mail. Getting mail, I put all my mail in my backpack and I look at it once a week on Mondays and that's when I touch it. That's when I do it once and I'm done. And everything I try to unsubscribe or auto pay so I don't have to ever deal with it again. Another aspect is notes that our staff send about patients in our medical records. If you look at the note, if it's something you're going to have to do, just do it now. If it takes one minute or two minutes, try to only touch everything that your staff gives you. If you have things on your desk to do, touch it once. What I what I tend to find that happens to us is we, we get this more, oh, I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to put this aside. And by the end of the day, you have this big task box of things to do. I prefer not even to look at the things. This is one of the reasons why when I look at email, I only look at it at noontime. And when I send email, I don't open up my whole email email browser. I look at just the send function. I send the email out versus looking at it. Because once I see it, it's almost like there's an open drawer that needs to be closed. And having that lack of completion is, is very challenging. Delegate everything to staff once you train them. Uh, I've been guilty of this in the past. I found out that I, I try to delegate and just give stuff to my staff and I don't teach them how to do it. That's been a really big uh, detriment to me. We have to delegate, but you have to teach them how to do it. So for example, filling out FMLA paperwork or filling out other paperwork, how to do Lamisil prescriptions, how to do uh, other types of prescriptions that are needed, uh, teaching them how to do it, training them how to do it, and then you can do it. So for example, recently we started to do some moon care products and I did teach them how to dispense it to patients, how to explain it to patients, how to do the paperwork, what type of paperwork was needed uh, for doing it as a DME item in the office. So we can delegate, but we have to train them. So we have to figure out a way of training. Now training, it might take multiple sessions. It's probably not gonna be the first time that they're gonna get it. So every time your staff have meetings, which I our, ours meet once a month, have them meet once a month to go over it, go over it, keep on going over it until they're familiar with it. Um, one thing that recently I've been using a virtual assistant and I meet with her every, uh, every Wednesday. And it's been really good because I can train, I can evaluate, I can train again, I can evaluate it. It's only a half hour meeting, but it's the best way to invest your time is investing in your staff because you can train them and it'll help you to save time in the long run. No matter what you do, if you can delegate it, and even though you spend 10 or 20 times more, let's say, than an actual, the actual task takes, it's going to save you time in the long run. So for example, one of the things that I that I've, I have someone else helping me with is, is posting the videos, uploading the videos to YouTube. I can show that. I can make a video, do it. But once it's done, it saves me a tremendous amount of time. It's just having the time to actually teach. There's something else that I'm going to be doing soon. I'm going to be using a, a scribe. In, in the office and I'm gonna have to train the scribe how to do the notes the, the way I like to do them. So making videos, explaining how to do that. 
It's going to take me time, dedicated time with them, but in the end, it's going to make it easier. I want to talk about making your own productivity system. We have to make our own productivity system. You can't use someone else's. Specifically as podiatrists, we're busy seeing patients. So what's going to work for you isn't probably going to work for, for others. These, these big planners, I've tried a couple of different planners that they take literally you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day just to fill out. And at the beginning of the week, you have to do this weekly review of last week. And I just, I just don't have time to do those. So I've made my own productivity system. I'll tell you what works for me. And I'd encourage you to make your own what works. But one of the best productivity systems for me is something called the five minute rule. And I talked about that a little bit before. When you touch things, touch it once. But if something takes me five minutes, I'm gonna do it right then. I try to be very efficient at, at getting things done, touching it once. If it takes five minutes, don't do it later. For example, if you're coming home, you're tired, you have to get gas, you don't want to get gas till the next day. Well, if it only takes five minutes, do it right then. The five-minute rule, if something takes less than five minutes, do it right then. Don't, don't put it off till later. That's a very good productivity system, I think. Um, plan a time when you're going to complete your notes. Uh, I want to give you an example. Normally, I complete my notes after each patient encounter. If I don't have time, I'll put in a, a few ideas. I'll put in, for example, what I did for DME. I'll put in what I did for imaging, for example, ultrasound or x-rays, and I can fill that in. I almost like, almost like filling in the blanks, but then I, I tend to finish the morning's notes around noontime. At the end of the day, I'm usually burnt out, and I don't like to do notes at the end of the day, so I'll wait till the following morning to finish those notes. That's my uh, my system or my plan for completing notes. It works very well. Uh, also, when you're doing notes, it's good to develop your own templates. If you have to type something over and over and over again, you can very easily make a template out of that. Uh, so you can use that. Once again, if you guys haven't um, did, done the 30-day practice blueprint, I would go to podiatrypracticemastery.com. And in there, you can, you can get that course. And in there, I have all my templates. If you want to see my templates that I use, they're within that, in that course, one of the days there. Uh, disable notifications to make yourself more efficient. I find that this is, this is helpful turning off all cell phones. So my cell phone, I don't have any notifications um, for anything. Actually, my it's hard. Even my wife, when she wants to get a hold of me, she has to call the office uh, to get through. So I don't have anything, no email notifications, nothing. I find that's a really big distraction. So if you can disable everything, another thing I recommend is turning off your phone from the color screen, making it black and white. That's a big win uh, to make yourself much more productive. Uh, specifically, my productivity system, I like to think of what are the three things that I want to do uh, every day. And this is going to kind of push my push my practice forward. Uh, for example, lately, I've been working on communication and using my patient presentations and specifically kind of developing what the need, asking the patient what their actual pain point is and guiding them towards uh, solving it versus just telling them what their problem is, having them tell it to me. And this is something, so when I write out what are the three things I want to do today, I'm going to look at like learning how to communicate or communicate better with my patients. Each patient that comes in, each new patient, learning to communicate better with them uh, my, and whatever the other three things are. So I can look at those three. I find doing more than three things in a day is really hard because we're so busy seeing patients. So you're seeing patients, you're humping through the day, trying to, you know, produce for your practice and doing more three, these are three other things than just seeing patients. Um, and then this is my key that I learned uh, years ago. It's a ruthless um, use of spare time. I learned this from studying uh, Dan Kennedy and you, you really wanna be ruthless in terms of the spare time. I wanna give you some examples. When I meet with people for interviews for podiatry practice mastery, I use Calendly. And I do the same thing for, for reps or for any other people that want to set up time with me. Uh, my, my time on Tuesdays today is the day that I record my videos. My time on Wednesdays and Thursdays is when I use Calendly to set up uh, interviews with other people. And then Monday, I don't usually do anything. And Friday is usually when I meet with a coach, either like an organizational coach or where I'm trying to learn something else. Because Fridays is my block time for doing a diabetic and nail care. So I do that only on Fridays. And then I, I'm pretty much guaranteed a full hour during my lunch hour so I can use that for something else. So that's the time blocking. And so the time blocking then is where I can learn something. I can uh, meet with a coach, meet with someone else to, to help me. Uh, other things you can time block would be email. I use my lunch hour, if I have any lunch hour left over, usually 10 or 15 minutes to do my email. And I do my email, I look at my WhatsApp, I do everything else that I need to do. 
also doing phone calls in a time block period of time, and then any type of paperwork, bills, other things like that. I find Calendly, if you're not familiar with it, works really well for scheduling appointments, giving people the time you want to be available so that you're not available all the time. I think that's the key because otherwise people will ask, well, can you do it after work? Can you do it before work? I don't like to use before and after work. Uh, I like to be with my family. I have other things I want to do in the morning and I only want to use that time. If they can't fit into that time, then it, it doesn't work for me. Occasionally, if I'm trying to get into someone else's schedule, then I'll use some of those other times. And then uh, I'd like to talk last about how to be efficient is to really automate patient explanations. Uh, this is something that's really changed my, changed my practice. Uh, specifically, I use these things called patient presentations. And this, for example, it just makes everything a lot easier. I had a patient come in today that had nail fungus, she was pregnant, and she had an ingrown toenail. And I wanted to talk to her about both of those. And uh, I'm going to show you how I use patient presentations for that. Uh, so um, let me just kind of pause this and I'm going to open up patient presentations to show you. Okay, give me just one second. This is the example that I use for my patients. I want to give you a little example. Um, if you go to patientpresentations.com, you can get access to this. But for example, the patient came in today, she had nail fungus. So I, I simply pulled up uh, this one right here on nail fungus, okay? And um, it pulled up my little slide deck and I went through nail fungus. But this patient also had ingrown toenails. So to do that, I went over to ingrown toenails and I also pulled up this quick little slide deck on ingrown toenails. So it makes things a lot easier where I was talking about ingrown toenails and the different types of treatments for the patient. We talked about removal and a matrixectomy in the future. I find that these, these patient presentations have really made my practice a lot easier. Uh, if you can, you can certainly use these. These, are, these aren't specific. These are mine that I use and I'm updating them. So I, I might mess you up if I'm updating them, but you can certainly use these in your practice. I'd recommend you trying these. And um, part of it, uh, which I also think uh, there's two other points that I was going to talk about as I'm finishing this up was, is using checklists. So as I'm kind of focusing through here, um, there are different checklists or treatment evaluators that really help practice. So this is my go-to. It's called a, I have it for everything, but an Achilles tendonitis treatment evaluator. It goes through the different treatments. And I kind of call this my, my, uh, my salvation at times because a patient comes in and uh, they're not getting better. And they've tried, for example, I had a patient yesterday with plantar fasciitis. They, they did three courses of shockwave. They weren't any better. I did an ultrasound. There's a lot of uh, thickness and other types of things and effusions on the ultrasound. And I ended up doing a cortisone because it was plantar fascia. I don't do it for Achilles, but for plantar fascia, I did the cortisone. Uh, they felt better. I also, when I asked them, okay, did you have to do physical therapy? They hadn't done that. So I prescribed that. They hadn't done a night splint. So I prescribed that. And um, they they already had orthotics, and so they they've done these things. But just just doing the the night splint and then doing the cortisone, and it's going to help. It's going to help in terms of the revenue, and it makes it a lot more objective versus subjective. By me showing this, I can I can really help them to decide a lot easier using this treatment evaluator. This has really helped me in private practice. Uh, to do that. So those were the other two things I was going to talk about. And then finally, recording these, these actual presentations or whatever presentation, you can use it for training of your staff. So these same presentations I give my staff when they're, when they're training to teach them about the conditions. And I can send these same videos uh, to the, to the patients. So those are the, those are the ideas I wanted to talk about in terms of um, using your best, uh, the best time techniques of uh, helping you. So automate your patient presentations using the checklist and then record and share videos and handouts with patients. I specifically use uh, Patient Education Genius. So the two things I talked about today that I'd like you to check out is go to patientpresentations.com. So you can try out my actual presentations, use them in your practice. I'd love to know your, your feedback, how that will work for you. And then um, also within uh, podiatrypracticemastery.com, you can go into the 30-day practice blueprint. And if you want my own templates on how I do uh, notes and things that I, I typically have to uh, repeat over and over and over again, uh, that's, I'd like to share that with you as well. Okay, hope you found this beneficial and until next time.